this is a get to know me video. A lot of people had questions. A lot of people want to know a bunch of stuff. So I have quite a few questions I'm going to be answering. Um, so let's just uh, get started. I was going to put them in categories because some are more serious, some are really silly, some are just get to know you. Um, and I decided just to mix them all up. So there isn't a section that just seems a little boring versus other areas. So they're just how they are, how the questions came in, and how I ended up writing them down. Okay, so first things first is how did you get the nickname Jelly? So I normally don't say my name on here, my real name. Um, I've been playing games for so many years that I'm used to nicknames. <laughs> So, um, but my real name is April. Um, one of the questions also is my age. I'm 42. So, how did I get the nickname Jelly? Well, it started out, it was in a game called Second Life. And I had multiple names over the years in there because I was in there a very long time, like 15 years. Um, but it was Jelly Bean because they all said I had this cute little girl voice and I like to dress in the cute little outfits. Um, so they just started calling me Jelly Bean for a while. Then people shortened it down to Jelly. And I started doing Jelly in World of Warcraft too and used the name Jelly, um, Alexa Jelly and um, GTA 5. Food preserves are preparations of fruits, Alexa. vegetables and sugar. Often canned or sealed for long term. Alexa, stop. <laughs> okay, so, jeez, yeah. Um, so the nickname just you know came about from playing games so long, and it's just what I got used to. It's jelly on every form I have and everything mostly. So it's kind of weird when I hear my real name. I think I'm in trouble. Like certain people, no big deal because that's all they've ever called me my whole life and I've known them for 15, 20 plus years or longer. But everyone else is kind of weird. It's like, I'm just not used to hearing it no more. Okay, <laughs> so, um, how did I get to 368? Someone wanted to know if it was due to low self-esteem. Did I eat my way there? If you are new, then you probably don't know these things. So I'm gonna go over this really fast because this could be a very long story. So as a child, I was always malnutrition and underweight. Um, even though I would eat, no weight would stay on my body. A horrifying event when I was 18, eight years old happened where some men tried to kidnap me at gunpoint. Uh, I had a adrenal gland issue that was no one knew about yet. And the shock of it all made me gain like 30 something pounds in less than a month without eating. I wasn't really eating, um, but my body went insane. And it triggered a condition that would last for a lifetime. Anytime I'm stressed or upset, I produce way more than I should and it causes severe weight gain overnight. Um, so I try not to get stressed, I try not to be emotional. And then also when I hit my teens, I developed polycystic ovary syndrome that was misdiagnosed. It didn't actually get diagnosed correctly until my late 30s. So when I would tell the doctor, I really am eating 600 calories and I really am working out, but yet I just gained 45 pounds in less than six weeks, they never would believe me until I met a wonderful GYN and I think about 37, who did tests on me. And when I walked in the door, she could already tell. And I had been suspicious for years that I had it because I developed the dark hair on my chin area and underneath, and I always have to um, use those women shavers and shave it off and because it would be black. And, and I'm a blonde. I don't want some black hair on my face. I got blonde hair, but so I, um, I was misdiagnosed for years, which caused diabetes. I had gestational diabetes when I was having my daughter and I was on a very 
very strict low carb diet at that point, like under 60 carbs a day and low fat because I didn't even know about keto and they had me on low fat and low carb and that was a nightmare. Um, I also was very sick being pregnant and lost tons of weight, but boy, did I gain it back after the pregnancy and um, my polycystic ovary syndrome just like kicked back in for some reason. It just wasn't that bad during pregnancy, but after it got so, so extremely bad. Um, you know, some doctors believe, like Dr. Berg believes that polycystic ovary syndrome is caused by the hormones being changed because of fat. And then other doctors believe polycystic ovary syndrome causes the fat. So it just depends on who you believe. I believe that the polycystic ovary syndrome is going to mess you up no matter what and make you fat because you're completely insulin resistant. Um, and that's how I got 368. I did not eat myself there. If I went to Taco Bell, um, I've always had a small inside stomach. I've always had stomach issues ever since I was born. So going to Taco Bell, if I ate a whole entire beef burrito supreme, I would be throwing up in a few minutes in severe pain because that was too much food at one time. I've managed to actually eat more food now in a sitting than I ever have in my life. Like I could only eat um, two thin crust slices of pizza and I'm talking about the little ones and those big pizza slices from like Brooklyn or something from actual New York, I couldn't even get through half of that. Um, it just wasn't possible. So I got to 368 because of medical conditions, not from overeating. If it was from overeating, I would have never ever been fat in my life. Yes, did I indulge on sweets? Um, yeah, yes, I did indulge in sweets. I rather had sweets than real food. Um, but it was still under a certain calorie every day. But the carbs were insanely high. So that's how I got there. Not from it caused me to have low self esteem though, extremely low self esteem being that fat. So next one, what career do you want in the future? Like, what do you hope to be? Well, the truth is I hope to be a real, like a keto coach. I hope to be able to um, pay my bills and everything through keto. One of the other questions was, did I have jobs before YouTube? Well, YouTube might take up 99% of all my time, but I actually don't make a penny from this yet. Um, so it's not, it's a job. It's just a not paying job. I live off of savings. Um, I have worked in a movie theater, which that was another question. What was my favorite job? So the movie theater was probably my favorite. I was there for seven years back and forth for different ones. It was all regal cinema. It's where all my friends worked and it was the best funnest time in my life. I didn't even feel like I was working. I really loved my job and all my friends that were there. Um, and I, I miss it all, all the time. Even after all these years, I still miss it. Um, I worked at a clothing store called Kato's as first assistant um, manager. Um, I like it, especially during holiday time, but it's very repetition. You really are doing the same thing every day. Folding clothes, hanging clothes, taking clothes and putting them off the shipments. Like, it's the same. Um, I was a waitress for years. I was a barista for years. I was, um, when McDonald's used to have big giant birthday parties back in the 90s, I ran that. I was a manager of doing that for a while. Um, I've worked in several nursing homes um, as customer service and front door security. I also did payroll on one of them. Um, the truth is I've had so many jobs. I've worked at Walmart. I've worked at KFC. Um, when I was younger, I know I've had over 30 something jobs probably. I, I have a little bit of an issue with um, repetition. I, I, I don't know if it's because my ADHD. I don't, I don't know what it is. But I had a lot of problems staying for more than seven months at a job. I would get bored, insanely so bored. So I find a job that paid better. So I wasn't like leaving a job just because I was so bored. I was just bored and I could make more money somewhere else. And um, I did that a lot. 
from like 15 to, because Baskin Robbins was my first job. So from 15 to 21, I did that a lot. And then I went to the theater until I was 27 and I had my daughter and then I worked at Cato's for years. Um, well, a year and then another year, like I switched different Cato's. Um, and then I became too fat and I got that nerve damage where I couldn't stand anymore. I didn't was not qualified for disability or anything, even though I couldn't stand. I literally kept falling all the time hitting my head. Um, but no, I didn't get disability or anything. I just um, survived on what I had. I was really good with money and I didn't like to spend my money back then. So everything I ever made always got saved for a rainy day. And that's what I've been living on for a very long time. Of course, I did make some money here and there gaming and different things like that. But I haven't really made anything in three years ever since, well, no, two. Ever since I started doing... Um, Hardcore Keo and leaving my games where I made my money. Um, yeah, because the gaming would trigger me. All right, this is probably too long of answers. So I'm sorry if these are too long of answers. Um, how did I figure out what foods affected me or stalled me? Well, it's pretty simple. There's a uh, elimination diet that an allergist will put you on. Basically, you're just eating about meat. Um, and we're not even talking about fish, we're talking like poultry or red meat, nutty and pork, um, for about a month. That's all you're going to eat. And then you're going to pick one thing that you think has been affecting you. Um, because I already knew from allergy tests what to stay away from. I already knew certain items like an onion. I have stomach issues, no onion. Same with peppers, same with, like those things I knew. So I would just add it back in and see what would happen. Um, the eggs were the tricky part because there's one egg I can have and I've never found any others that I can have that doesn't affect me. Um, there's one brand of coconut flour that I'm really good on compared to other ones. Uh, it's just eliminating, putting one back in, doing it for three days, seeing if anything happens. If nothing happens, it went on that, okay, you can have less going four days back to just meat and then doing it over and over again. I did this twice. I did this a year ago um, when I went carnivore and I did it this year too. So I ended up with a list. I know I cannot really process cabbage too well, even though I really want it. I, I do better with raw carrots than cooked carrots. Celery gives me issues, but I can have some celery. Um, broccoli is extremely painful for me. I can have one serving of cauliflower. Like, it took time to find all this out and find the threshold of what I could and couldn't have. Um, MCT, and one of the problems too is I was so big into the MCT. I was doing like 10 to 20,000 MCT milligrams a day. And I lost tons of weight doing that. Don't get me wrong. And I had tons and tons of energy, tons of clarity. But it was one of the major things that were affecting my stomach issues so bad. And I never thought it was. And it actually was. <laughs> I had learned that the very hard way after I took it out for a while and I realized. And that's why one of my collagens I can't have because the MCT in it, the amount is so much higher than Perfect Keto. Perfect Keto has the exact amount that I can have a day without getting stomach sick. What made me start keto? Okay, I guess these are all serious questions at the top, huh? <laughs> um, what made me start keto? Well, that was pretty simple. I had to diet after diet, even Atkins diet, but people scared me so bad, so I'd stop that. Um, and I went into the heart doctor. It was 2017, and um, I was told any day now, I was gonna have congestive heart failure. The walls of my heart had hardened, my blood pressure was like 200 over 190 almost, like we're talking insane stroke levels. Um, and I was maxed out on three different blood pressure pills. I was on six, 500 milligrams a day, 
metformins. Uh, I could go on and on and on. I was testing positive for having one of five autoimmune diseases, which they thought was lupus because I sensitive to the sun, had the butterfly mask on my face going on, and it runs in my family. Um, fell every few minutes. Like I had nerve damage down my left leg, told it would be like that forever. I was never going to not fall anymore. And it just scared me so much that I didn't care that people kept saying keto would kill me because I didn't have a life and I was going to die anyways, right? So I went home and, you know, one of my old friends from working at the movie theater, her and her unit and them, like firefighters and stuff, they had done it and lost a bunch of weight within a month. I'm like, what can it hurt? I already eat bacon and eggs anyways. I already eat steaks anyways. I eat everything on the list, so I'm not adding anything to my diet. I'm not adding, I'm going to a healthier butter. I'm going to heavy cream instead of any kind of milk product. All I'm going to do is take things out of my diet. So how could it hurt me? I'm just taking flours, flour, sugar, um, pos like anything that was a carb. I didn't eat the carby vegetables anyways. I uh, was I just had to take grapes away and pineapple away because um, that was the only fruit I ate and put berries in its place like I was just like it, how can it hurt me I'm I'm not I'm not adding fat to my diet I'll probably take a lot of fat away believe it or not I'm just taking carbs away to be truthful and not really adding anything and it worked very fast I lost 120 pounds the first year um, the second year, I lost 61 pounds in the first half of the year, and then I basically stalled for a year straight. But that was because of the ibuprofen, and I've learned that now. So now I know um, about my little ibuprofen issue. Not everyone has that issue, but I do. Okay, um, let's see. Will I stay keto? Yes, I'm gonna stay keto for life. Will I go off on a holiday meal? Yes, yes, I think it's okay for me to have dressing on Thanksgiving. I think it's okay to have my mom's chili if I want for Christmas Eve or um, whenever we end up having it. Um, I think it's okay to have lima beans at Easter. I know, sounds weird, but those are what I miss on those holidays. Um, so yes, I will stay keto for life. However, on those special occasions, I will not and not feel guilty about it at all and it will just be the one meal it won't be a whole day thing uh, 4th of July I don't need the bun to be happy I actually love this 4th of July's meals I did go up in water weigh about seven pounds but that was because of the meal Dutchman in the ranch dip and I ate a bunch of sandwich meat which we know I gain weight when I eat sandwich meat so yes the question is why say keto and the answer is absolutely um, what is my dreams for the future? You know this one's a hard one because this is what I've been thinking about a whole lot lately. Now I am not the person that I was trapped to be. Um, I, my jobs, my life decisions on who I married, everything was because of my weight and just feeling honored that anyone wanted to have anything to do with me or wanted to hire me or just anything. I don't owe anyone anything. I don't have to say yes to a job because I'm so fat I should just be grateful or anything else. So the truth is, I, I don't know what I want for my future. Like, I don't know what my dreams for my future is right now. Especially in this time of the world, like with the virus, I just... It's like all of a sudden the world's been opened up to me with possibilities that I don't even know. Like I know I want to be a keto coach. I know I want to help people lose weight. I want to continue to make my videos here. I know I want to do some traveling. Um, but used to when people asked me that when I was younger, I was like, well, I want five kids and about a hundred grandkids and, and to be married forever to one person and blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, I, I no longer want those five kids. <laughs> I mean, I would have loved them if I had had five kids, but 
God did not plan that for me. And I finally accepted that. Um, so I don't really know what I want. And I've been trying to think about that lately. Uh, really hardcore. What do I want? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I have to think about that. Are you in a relationship? Yes. Um, for three years now, but unfortunately he lives in Hawaii and I went to see him every six months for four weeks to six weeks. Um, but because of the pandemic, I have not seen him in 15 months. Is it hard? Yes. Um, we're on the phone for hours. He knows how to push my buttons a lot lately. So, um, yeah, it's really, really hard. So what as a child did you want to be? Well, I wanted to be an actress. <laughs> an actress or a forensic um, profiler. Those were the things I wanted to be. Desperately bad. So, um, yeah, I figured I was too fat to be an actress. And the forensic profiler, even though I'm pretty good at reading people, um, my learning disability just put that completely out of the window for me. So uh, now I just want to help people. Um lose weight and become a, who they were meant to be and not be trapped in a chair. What was my favorite, or I answered the favorite job. Oh, my star sign, I am a Pisces, born in March. Um, and I am totally, totally true to my Pisces. Like, yes, yes, I can get emotional. I am a big time dreamer and I'm very sensitive to other people. How tall am I? <clears throat> I am 5'6". <clears throat> and losing my voice. Okay, shoe size. Well, I was almost a 12 before keto. Um, I am a 10 and a half. Very, very narrow now. They don't make very narrow and they don't make 10 and a half. 10's too tight. Um, 11's way too big. Like my foot is drowning in it. So I'm kind of screwed for most shoes right now, to be honest. I'm having some serious shoe issue. Um, favorite TV show? Oh, that is way too hard because I probably seen Pretty Little Liars a million times. Same with Vampire Diaries, The Originals, Supernatural, uh, The 100s, uh, and then all the new ones, like the medical ones, all the cop ones. I've seen every single episode of all... Uh, SUV, I've seen all of both, like, I can't name just one, but the ones I've probably seen the most has been Pretty Little Liars and Vampire Diaries. I'm making sure, I'm pretty sure those are the ones I've seen the most. Uh, I know I've seen them at least six times through. <sighs> True Blood, I've seen a Quite a few times through too there's just some things I'm just like y'all weren't it with but yeah um biggest achievement well that's simple losing 205 pounds that is definitely my biggest achievement like you have no clue how much work how much thinking how much planning how much self-control went into 205 pounds like i don't think i will ever achieve anything as big as that like that was huge <clears throat> okay favorite food um if you've asked me this before keto i probably would have told you hot dogs with the bun and breaded fried wings after keto i'm probably gonna have to answer no breaded and i want them air fried wings um keto nachos are pretty good too they just hurt my stomach a little and the truth is i still love hot dogs cooked on a grill a ballpark beef dog cooked on the grill dipped with some mustard and stuff if if it did not affect my weight because it does with all those chemicals in it and stuff I would probably still be eating a lot of those I really do love hot dogs 
Like when I go to Hawaii, that's what I eat almost every day. I go down to 7-Eleven, I get their hot dog without the bun, I put the nacho cheese on it and some mustard, and I eat that like every day while I'm in Hawaii. I, I do love me some, <laughs> some hot dogs. I know, not the healthiest, but I mean, ribs used to be my all-time favorite, and they just make me throw up all the time now, so I haven't eaten ribs in a long time. I think over a year or two. Like, I'll eat a bite of one when I we order them from Mission's Barbecue, but they just don't settle. There's too much fat in them. I'm not a girl who can eat the fat of meat. Favorite song? Well, right now, Put Your Record On is probably my favorite song right this minute. Um, All-time favorites. I don't have one because there are millions that I love. Um, favorite movie? Yeah. I don't have one because there are too many movies I just love. Like at different times of my life. Like Pelican Brief, I saw, probably saw 700 times when it first came out. Uh, the Kevin Costner's Robin Hood, I watched a billion times. Harry Potter's, I've seen so many times I can repeat every line in them. And there are so, so many, so many, so many movies like that for me. Um, so I can't tell you what my favorite is because I love too many of them. Oh, and Riverdale is one of my favorite shows too. I can't believe I forgot Riverdale. Do I have tattoos? No, no. But if I could, if I wasn't allergic, I would have a Tinkerbell doing her little wand with her little magic dust on my right ankle. I would have an affinity sign right here, um, and, and this affinity sign would not be for any man. It would be for um, God to remind me that I'm always loved by him. Um, and what was one of the others? Oh, I wanted a flock of ravens, black ravens, flying on this shoulder blade down on this side. I wanted the big feather breaking apart blowing in the wind um and down my actual spine I wanted a corset like design that there um and I kind of wanted that on my calf too like it's probably a good thing I can't have tattoos I'd be really 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 broke and uh, all tatted up and we all know I get sick of stuff, so that would have probably been a problem. Now, the Tinkerbell, the Ravens, I know I would have never gotten sick of. Let's see. Phobias. Do I have phobias? Well, I am claustrophobic. I do have a fear of heights. A very bad one. Um, I used to have a phobia of spiders, but no one's here to kill them anymore, so I have to do it. So I had to get over that phobia. I do hate snakes beyond belief, but it's not really a phobia, I guess. I don't freeze up. Um, I think that's my only phobia. Oh, no, I have one. I forgot what it's called. Um, this one's a weird one, and it's a real one that a lot of people have, and they don't know it. Ha they have it until they look at it. I didn't know until I was tested for it. So tons of little holes all combined together there is a phobia for that and I have that majorly I will freak out for days and I'll be stuck in my head and I'm trying not to picture it right now okay do I believe in ghosts yes yes I do believe in ghosts and I have met quite a few ghosts um uh favorite season well I love all of them really I love winter when it snows otherwise I can't really stand it I don't like rain or gloom um, I love the fall. It's beautiful and it's perfect weather. The same with the spring starts to get pretty. I do not like the pollen though. And summer, I love all summer activities. I love the warmth of the sun. I don't care how hot it is. I completely love it. So I don't have a favorite season. I enjoy all of them. And I wished I lived a little more north in North Carolina so I could get the snow every year. Um, can I sing? Uh... Some people say I can carry a tune just fine. I do not think I can sing, but I do do sing snap on the internet just for fun. And I do karaoke a whole lot, but I don't think I can sing. Um, where was I born? Well, that's easy. Florida. Yes, I am a Florida girl born true and true and was uh, implanted here when I was 10 years old on Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, 
because um, my dad went army and we got stationed here. Then when I turned 21, I moved back to Florida um, on Valentine's Day and I lived there for another seven plus years and then moved back to North Carolina on Valentine's Day. What is this on me moving on Valentine's Day? I, it's so weird. Um, and then I've been in North Carolina for the last 15 years, almost 16 years. No, it was 16 years come Valentine's Day because my kid's 15. I had to move back because I was pregnant with her. Um, let's see. Worst injury I ever had. Oh, this one's a doozy. So, if y'all are still sticking with me after 30 minutes, I used to pressure cooker for the first time in my life. It was the Instapot pressure cooker. I did not know that it is not supposed to have any kind of resistance. And I thought I had released all the pressure because it wasn't showing pressure anymore. And it had a little, like, I had to torque it a little. And I had no clue if you have to do that, stop. And it blew up all over the ceiling. And I ripped my shirt off as fast as possible, but it was already too late. My skin came with it two layers of my skin came with it. My whole entire stomach, which magically is not scarred to pieces because I was told they, it would be scarred for life. I had to go to burn clinics and everything. My whole entire stomach got first and second degree burns everywhere. Um, they couldn't give me Silvadine, 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 whatever it is. It's supposed to help the pain and everything. They couldn't give me anything for the pain. They couldn't do anything because of my allergies. They they tried to bandage it up and within minutes, even though it was not latex tape, within minutes I had second degree chemical burns everywhere the tape was and it pulled more of my skin off that had nothing to do with the burn because it was in areas that were no burn, but I got burns from that. So they sent me to a burn clinic who could not give me anything either. Everything they tried, I had a reaction to, so, for three plus weeks, I sat in the house with a bra and underwear on only and slept in a chair freezing because nothing could touch my stomach anywhere. It ha it was oozy, it was so disgusting, and it couldn't, it was having, because at this time point, I'm 300 and something pounds. I have, um, still have diabetes, still have everything wrong with me, and it, it, it wasn't healing fast enough. But it did end up healing. Um, a miracle happened, and I don't have scars. And the doctors still don't understand why I'm not covered in scars. Wish I could get rid of my stretch marks that easy. But yeah, so that was my worst injury ever. Am I weird? Someone asked, am I weird? Um, people might think I'm weird. I mean, I do keto. Some people think that's weird. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know. Do I do anything actually crazy weird? I don't think so. I'm literally trying to sit here and think. I mean, I'm the girl that blasts the music, roll down my window, and dance and sing while I'm driving in the car. Like, I'm moving and singing. Um, some people might think that's weird. Um, but I don't think I have anything bizarre about me. I don't know. If I was a superhero, what would my power be? I've been thinking about this one and I don't have an answer because some people's like, well, I'd want to see the future. Well, one thing about me is I can see the future a lot. Um, like when the virus was going to happen um, back in October. Well, first of all, in October, I had a dream that my grandfather came and told me that my dad was going to die of a heart attack. I told him he did not listen to me and he had a heart attack in less than a month. Also, at that time, had a horrible nightmare that this thing was coming. Um, I didn't know. It was an explosion, but tons of people were going to die throughout the whole entire world, and people were going to get sick, and it would lead down a horrible, dark, crazy, insane unrest for the whole entire world for a long time to come. Yeah. So, and that's nothing. I've predicted almost every family member and friend's death within two days of it. Um, I always know if a relationship is going to end or not end. 
um, like years before it actually does. I see it. And some people's like, well, don't do that because then you are cursing your relationships. No, I just know where I'm going to go. Like, I knew one day I was going to lose all my weight, just not to give up because it was out, out there somewhere. Because I, I saw myself smaller. I saw certain things in certain places that I should not know and, and, and like, certain people that I had never met and I have met since then. Um, and y'all might all think I'm crazy, but this is just something I've always been able to do. I can meet someone and instantly know their pain or know if they're, their joy and like, it's really, really strange. Like, and to me, it was a curse. Like I had nightmares. It was hard to sleep. It was hard to do a lot of stuff. And you know, uh, you might not believe this, but I have O negative blood and a lot of people with O negative blood tends to report this kind of stuff. They also have a lot of allergies. Um, they have a lot of foresight. Like, it's kind of weird. And we can't have babies with other people without a shot because our bodies want to kill their baby. Um, I know, y'all praising all this crazy. Jack can go look it up. So, uh, I don't know what power I want to want. Maybe to fly? No, I don't like heights. Um... Maybe what Jasper had in Twilight. I, I love those movies, by the way. Um, where he can change people's moods. Because right now, I think that would be amazing for this world. Because everyone needs to get happier right now. Um, favorite swear word. I don't know why someone asked me this. It was probably the B word. Um, I call people. I, I just. I, I don't use it as a swear word, though. It's just like, oh, please, beep. Or... Ser like, I don't know, I just, to me it's not a cuss word, and my mama hates it more than anything, she can't stand it, um, so, I'm not afraid of any of the cuss words, I'll use the C word, and not even be saying it meanly, like, not even my mom, though, <laughs> but, like, I don't know, I just, I think words lose their power if you just use them, they have no power, um, like, that's how I've always been. So these have been the questions that I was asked. I don't think there's any more. Let me make sure I didn't miss any. Oh, have I ever met someone famous? Yes, actually, I met a whole crap load of famous people. Um, I will tell you right now, Sinbad is not a nice person in real life. But Halle Berry, she's a sweetheart. Um, oh my gosh, I met so many people. It's uh, working at the movie theater I did where I lived in Florida. I mean, there was tons of famous people. Um, Faith Hill used to come in and watch movies all the time. It's just, you would be really surprised in that little tiny, supposed to be older people area, had a lot of stars hiding up in there. Um, Robert De Niro uh, came in once or twice. He's really nice. Um, I met a lot of singers, like, yes, I met a lot of famous people, but I didn't treat them famous. That's the difference. When you go and start treating a famous person famous sometimes, that's where they don't want to talk to you. If you just talk to them like a normal person and ask them how their day is going and stuff, they'll still have a conversation with you. They just want to be normal sometimes. And I learned that really quickly and kept trying to tell our ushers that because when they would come give a movie ticket stuff, they would freak out. And, um, yeah, <laughs> we couldn't have that. So is there anything else you want to know about me that I did not answer in the last 40 something minutes? Because I've talked crazy long and this probably should have been yes or no questions, but instead I elaborated. So if there's anything else you want to know, like, uh, I used to be a five X above 40 in women's clothes, men, that's huge. You just don't even know. It's not about, it's over 70 something inch waist. Um, and my bra band was over 60 something inches. Like I had the 58 inch band with four of those little four inch things all tied up. So I'm not really sure how how big it actually was and the biggest part of my stomach I was never able to measure it was way above 70 inches and I call that the tire zone um now my bra is a 36 inch and it's too big I keep having to pull it back up so um my waist 
Uh, I think we got it down to 41. Was the last time I checked or 40? I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. I'm just so happy. I, I'm now in a medium, a size 10 jeans. Never could wear jeans at all because the 28s and the 30s would not even begin the clothes on me. Um, my shirts are smalls and medium, and the mediums swallow me. So I'm buying mostly smalls now. I think that's about it right now. I'm a totally different person. And I can just be me now without all this low self-esteem and without all this, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, overthinking. And so I'm addicted to coffee. One person did ask, what do I drink in the morning? Well, I drink coffee 24 seven. <laughs> it is my drink of choice. I gave up soda this past year and um, April, no more soda at all, no carbon. I realized carbon was tearing my stomach apart. So no more flavored carbon water or nothing. No more flavor waters at all because they all give me heartburn. So you will see me drink, eat a lot of shaved ice or because too much water gives me heartburn too. I know, crazy. Or my collagen or my premier protein shakes. Um, I hear a lot of ambulance and it's distracting me. So that is what I drink. Beforehand, those Mountain Dew Zeros that I tried and Coat Zeros, they were the bomb and they were my best friend and I loved them and I lost tons and tons of weight on keto with them, but they upset my stomach so bad they had to go bye-bye. And those little ice waters, oh, those were so amazing, sparkling ice or whatever they're called, but yeah, I can't have them either because of my stomach. There are so many foods on keto I can lose weight with like heavy creams and cheeses and bell peppers and mushrooms and onions and, and spaghetti sauces um, that's low carb like so much but I don't eat them because of my stomach issue not because I can't lose weight on them but because I will have severe heartburn throw up and not sleep so that's why my diet's so bland so boring so that's why I love my pancakes. I can put those back in there that I got my eggs back in stock. Okay, I hope y'all have enjoyed seeing a little bit of who I am. If you want to know more, just ask. I'll tell you. Maybe I'll do a live soon. I keep saying that. And then every time I want to do a live, I realize it's the bad time of day that no one else will be around. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll need to schedule a live. Um... Put in the link below, like down below, comment area. Tell me what days and times are good for you. Give me some option. Give me some day times and give me some even evening times. And like, give me a few options to work with because it's really hard to work with everyone. So I want to try to get the bulk, um, whatever's the closest to each other. Okay, hope everyone has a great day.